Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up your copy of Slime Incorporated. It's my first detective novel. It's a story of murder and dirty politics set against the backdrop of the Idaho gubernatorial election. As a private investigator, Cole Eustick tries to solve a series of murders. Uh, the book is available as a paperback, as an audiobook through audible.com or the Apple Store, or it's also available wherever fine ebooks are sold. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Philo Vance, the original air date, March 8th, 1949, and this one is The Curtain Call Murder Case. <laughs> Come on, Al, come on. I don't have all day. I'm just brushing some lint from your dinner jacket, Mr. West. I won't be a moment. How much time do we have? The curtain goes up in half hour. Plenty of time, Mr. West. You don't make your entrance until five minutes after it's up. That doesn't mean I have to wait till the last minute to get dressed. Step on it, Al. I'm just about through now, Mr. West. There you are, sir. Didn't I get any mail from California today? No, Mr. West, not a thing. Fine agent I've got. Go east, he says to me. Get a part on Broadway. Then the movie companies will want you back. Did you hear from him? <laughs> Neither did I. How's my makeup? Looks fine, sir. Oh, if you'll forgive my saying it, I think you could put just a bit more dye on your hair, though. There is the slightest bit of gray showing. There is? Where? Right about... Yes, the... yes, yes, I see it. I'll fix that right away. Richard. Uh, well, that's quite a pretty picture you make in the doorway, my dear. Very dramatic. Now come in and shut the door. Tell him to get out of here, Richard. I want to talk to you. Go ahead, Al. You heard the lady. Yes, Mr. West, of course. I'll be in the wing. What do you want, Jean? You can see I'm busy making up. I go on in half an hour. You will go on in half an hour only if I change my mind about you, Richard. Well, well, what's this? Did anyone ever tell you that you're really a rat? <laughs> Now, Jean, please, compose yourself. Uh, sit down. I don't want to sit down. All right, all right. What's that pretty blonde head of yours troubled about? You, that's what. What did you promise me, Richard? Come on, tell me what. <laughs> you tell me. What did I promise you? A part in this play, a chance at pictures afterwards. You swore you'd get both of them for me. I should have known better than to believe you. You should have known better than to break into my dressing room, too. <laughs> but you didn't. Now, fly away somewhere, Jean, until after the show. Oh, no. I came here for one purpose, Richard. And I'm not leaving until I do what I came for. What are you looking for in that handbag of yours? Mirror? You don't need it. You've acted the part beautifully, my dear. Mirror? You call this a mirror? It's a bottle, Richard, and you know what's in it? Acid. A face. Yes, that face of yours is never going to see another girl. Give me that bottle. Get away from me. You take your hands off of me. I'll never give you this. Stop. You're breaking my wrist, Richard. I'll take that little bottle, darling. There. That's better. Now run along somewhere and play. Run along somewhere and play? I'll run along. But I'll be back to see you, Richard. And then I'll really play for keep. You ordered a soda, Jean. Why don't you drink it? I'm thinking about... About Richard West? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not very complimentary, is it, darling? Thinking about him when you're with me? I hate him, Bob. Oh, no. Too much venom, Jean. It'd be more convincing if you weren't making such a definite effort. 
Matter of fact, I hate him too. Not like I do. Why not? He promised you a part in the play he's in. He didn't deliver. I had the part he's playing now until he stepped in. Same reason. <laughs> Say, Gene, you know who's casting? Who? George McCready. Let's you and I go over to his office now, huh? Oh, I don't feel like it. Oh, you'd better feel like it before words gets around this soda fountain. McCready is listening to readings. Did you ever see so many actors and actresses out of work in your life? And that includes us, you know. Not if we get over to McCready's in time. You know how word flies around in this place. <laughs> in two minutes, the whole mob of them would be flooding McCready's office if they knew. Oh, forget McCready for now, will you, Bob? All right, for you, I'll forget it for now. Bob, what would you say if I told you that Richard West hurt me... hurt me more than I can tell even you? Gee. Bob, I hate that man so much I won't rest while he's alive. You claim you love me. You've said there isn't anything you wouldn't do for me. Well, honey, you, you know how fellas say things like that. You meant it, Bob. I know you meant it. Look what Richard West has done to you. He took that stage job because he knew you were first in line for it. Knew that a young actor could be a star in that part. That was a honey of a part. I could have played the heck out of it, too. Sure you could. You could have been great. The notices would have been all for you. It would have made you, Bob. And just because West knew I liked you, he took the role. He killed you professionally, Bob. Don't you realize that? He killed me professionally. Yeah, I guess he did. Maybe that gives me an idea of what I've got to do to him. That's all, that's all. Leave the curtain down. No more calls. I'm going to my dressing room. Yeah, wait a minute, West. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, Mr. Adams, how are you tonight? I was pretty good before I saw this performance. I want to talk to you, West. More people want to talk to me. It's just that attitude I want to talk to you about. I've got a lot of money tied up in this show, West. I lose a fortune if it goes under. Hmm, well, what's that to me? When you produce and back your own shows, you're taking a gamble. I know, but I like a fair shake. You practically begged for this part after I had young Bob Davis all set for it. So? So I gave it to you because I thought your name would help at the box office. Well, it doesn't mean a thing. And I'm paying you a lot of money. We've got no advance sale, none at all. This thing's a turkey. That's why nobody's coming to see it. We could be breaking even or showing a profit if you'll be reasonable about the money you're getting. Look, don't bother me, will you? I want to go to my dressing room, take off these clothes and relax. I'm not taking any cut. And uh, whatever talking you must do, do it tomorrow. I'll talk to you about it tonight. I'm giving you this straight, West. The way I feel about you, you won't be around tomorrow to be talked to. Markham! Markham! Oh, there you are, Vance. I'll be right with you. Well, the great Philo Vance is now acting as my personal chauffeur. I'm getting up in the world. How much higher can a district attorney get? <laughs> get in, Markham. Thank you, Vance. I suppose you know why I phoned and asked you to pick me up. No, I don't know, but I suspect. And I'll be duly grateful if my suspicions are correct. You're right, as usual, Vance. It's a murder. And not an ordinary murder, or the police department could handle it very well, I'm sure. No question about that, Markham. Which way do you want me to drive? Uh, straight ahead, Vance. I'll tell you all about this as we go along. And I'll let you know where to turn. Good enough, my friend. Suppose you start from the beginning, eh? Well, the beginning and the end of this case, as much as we know about it, that is, are very close together, Vance. Did you ever hear of an actor named Richard West? Former leading man in pictures, now on Broadway in a play. That's the man, Vance. Well, it seems he's dead. Actually or professionally? As I understand it, he'd been slipping professionally for some time, but I'm speaking of him as a person. He was found shot to death in his apartment several hours ago. And that's where we're going now? Yes, Vance, that's where we're bound for. We've done quite a bit of work on the case already, although we haven't any results to speak of. Well, let's talk about the results you can speak of, Markham. Well, it seems that West took the job in the play he was in, and a lad named Bob Davis didn't like that. Bob was set for the role before West came along. Hardly a murder motive, Markham. Oh, there's more to it than that. This Davis had a girlfriend, a beautiful blonde, from what Sergeant Heath tells me. Her name is Jean Carey. And it seems that West did more than kick her around a little. And you think that Bob Davis might have resented that? I think Jean Carey resented that, Vance. According to Heath, she's quite an excitable person. 
She had a motive, and she is a blonde, you know. Well, that factor isn't terribly important, Markham. Some of the least murderous people I know are blondes. Well, that's possible, of course. The point I started to make was that Sergeant Heath has rounded up Miss Carey and is holding her at the apartment of the late Richard West. He has also, as I understand it, notified B.J. Adams, producer of the show West was in. Very thorough of Heath, Markham. I must remember to thank him. Anything else? Yes. The gun was near the body. No fingerprints as usual. Uh, turn here, Vance, and then straight ahead. Very well. Straight ahead, you say? Yes. I hope it's straight ahead to the solution of this murder. Don't think I'll let you come near me. Oh, no. I know what you'll do if I put down this gun. Stand back, I said. Way back or I'll shoot. I mean it, I'll shoot. Don't try that old trick of looking over my shoulder as if there was somebody there. I know there isn't. Your number's up, Tony. Way up. What are you smiling for? Maybe there is somebody in back of me. I'd better look. No. No, don't shoot, don't I... Okay, Davis, that's fine. Fair enough. Did you, did you like it, Mr. McCready? Do you think there's a part in your play for me? I'll let you know. Keep in touch with the office, Davis. Everybody go now. It's all readings for today. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mr. McCready. Uh, wait a minute, Davis. Huh? Oh, oh, it's you, Hank. Yeah, that's right, Hank Gale, best actor's agent in show business. Uh, I'd like to talk to you, Bob. Yeah, about what? About getting your part in this play McCready's doing. I can handle that guy, Davis. No, no, nothing doing. I know all about you and your shady deals, Gale. Wait a minute, don't be in such a hurry. Take your hands off my coat. I gotta get out of here. You shouldn't be in such a hurry, Davis. You really shouldn't be. I got angles in this town, lots of angles about lots of things. What are you talking about? Murder. I got angles about the murder of Richard West, for instance. Uh, don't you think maybe you ought to be in my office tomorrow morning? Huh, kid? Your name is Jean Carey, is that correct? That's right, Mr. Vance. And in answer to your next question, I wasn't up here at Mr. West's apartment at all today until Sergeant Heath brought me here a little while ago. You're anticipating my questions, Miss Carey. Perhaps you'd care to answer the next one. I haven't asked that either. Well, you're going to want to know how it is that there are two champagne glasses on this end table. And why it is that one of them has lipstick marks on it. You're doing fine, Miss Carey. Now, how about answering your own question? I don't know how it is. Mr. West had other girlfriends, I suppose. Oh, I don't smoke that brand of cigarettes, Mr. Vance. You mean this stub in the ashtray I'm looking at? That's right. It has lipstick on it, hasn't it? The same lipstick, I'd say, as there are indications of on the champagne glass. Well, it's not mine. So you say. This lipstick is sort of light, isn't it? Looks like it might be orange. Mr. Vance... How long are they going to hold me? That's entirely up to the district attorney and Sergeant Heath. Until the murderer of Richard West is caught, I imagine. Why? In a hurry to go somewhere? I'm in a hurry to go anywhere as long as it's away from here. You think this is fun? Hardly. Especially to the police, Miss Carey. The police don't like unsolved murder cases. In fact, the only person that likes a murder less than the police is the victim. <laughs> Very funny. Well, what happens to me now? Am I to be held here or in prison until you find out either that I didn't kill West or who did? I think the police will release you, Miss Carey, as soon as I'm through with you. You know, of course, that Sergeant Heath is trying to locate your boyfriend, Bob Davis. That shouldn't be too tough. I can tell you where to find Bob. Oh, really? And you wouldn't mind turning him over to the police? Why should I mind? He didn't do anything. He and I were together at the time of the murder. If he knew the police wanted him, he'd be here with bells on. What would he have to lose? I don't know. Is it true that B.J. Adams, the producer, was going to star Bob Davis in a play before Richard West appeared on the scene? Yes. Bob's a good actor. He would have been great in the part. Hmm. I wonder how good he was in playing the role of a murderer. Why, Bob wouldn't kill anybody. Even for me or, or himself. Why, he couldn't. He isn't the type. According to you, that is. But don't forget, Miss Carey, that according to Shakespeare... One man in his time plays many parts. This is District Attorney Markham. 
The curtain call murder case opened with the finding of the body of Richard West, former Hollywood leading man, currently appearing on Broadway for producer B.J. Adams. The suspects include blonde Jean Carey, West's former girlfriend, and Bob Davis, young actor who has been going with her. Philo Vance, after studying lipstick marks on a glass and cigarette in West's apartment, is quite certain that Miss Carey is not responsible for them, although he hasn't said why. He's told me he had some inquiries to make at the office of Hank Gale, the theatrical agent, and he should be there. You wanted some dope on Jean Carey, eh, Vance? Yes, please. Well, uh, I can give you some personal dope on the gal if... Uh... You're very helpful, Mr. Gale, and I appreciate it. Oh, no trouble. Kind of like the idea of helping out final events. Maybe sometime you could uh, help me, huh? Maybe, Mr. Gale. I understand Miss Gary's been in show business since she was a kid, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew her mother pretty well. Good hoofer. One of the best. Her old man wasn't much of a guy. Good performer, but a bad boy. Did a one-man band act. Well, the mother hopped the buck uh, before Jean was born. And after? Well, as I remember it, the father stuck around for about six or seven years and then blew. I don't know what happened to him. Jean's mother died right after that, and the kid must have had a pretty tough time before she was old enough to work on her own. I imagine she did. What kind of a fellow was this Richard West, Mr. Gale? Ah, rat. You want details? I think I get the general idea. Well, this producer, Adams, really let him have it after the show the night West was killed. Anyhow, that's what I hear, and I get around. I hear a lot of things, Vince. Really? That Mr. Adams' quarrel with West sounds like something I should know more about. I think I ought to go over and see Mr. Adams and find out whether a Broadway producer can produce anything interesting in this case. Is Mr. Adams in, Miss? He's in, but he ain't seen any actors today. I'm Bob Davis. I once read... Oh, I know you, Mr. Davis. I remember you were here before, a couple of months ago. I'll never forget a face. I got a photogenic mind. Good day, Mr. Davis. I've got to see Mr. Adams. I know. They all say that, only you can't. Good day, Mr... Hey! Hey, you can't go in there. No, don't bet. Mr. Adams, I've got to talk to you. What do you mean breaking into my office like this? Get out here immediately. Not until I've talked to you. Mr. Adams, my name is Bob Davis. I know you're going to reopen the play that Richard West was in, and I want the part I was promised once. Oh, you do, huh? Yes, I do. Does that give you the right to come crashing in here and telling me what you want? Get out of here before I throw you out. Mr. Adams, I've... You're Bob Davis. You should know the police are looking for you for Richard West murder. What? Been on the radio for hours. Now get out before I call him and tell him you're here. I didn't know. Yes, Miss Jeffers. Should I call the police, Mr. Adams? I could hear that Davis guy yelling all over the place. No, don't bother, Miss Jeffers. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Adams, there's a Mr. Vance outside. Philo Vance. Philo Vance, the private investigator? He sure looks good enough to be. Send him in. Hey, Davis, where are you going? If that's Vance, he may be after me. I'm getting out of here before he sees me. Hmm. Mr. Adams? Oh, come right in, sir. Glad to see you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. How are you today, sir? Very good, thank you. And yourself? Fine. Say, haven't I seen you before, Mr. Adams? I don't remember meeting you, Mr. Vance, but it's possible you've seen me at the theater. I'm an inveterate first-nighter. Go to every first-night opening in town, except my own. Can't stand my own opening. It's too <laughs> nerve-wracking. I can imagine. It seems to me, though, that I've seen you within the past week, and there hasn't been an opening this week. No, there hasn't. The opera, maybe. I was there last Saturday night. That must have been it. Funny how an unclarified detail sticks in your mind, isn't it? I'm sure it hasn't the slightest significance, but I did remember seeing you. Like the opera, Vance? Generally, I liked the performance Saturday evening, all except the overture. The second violins seemed out of tune for the first few minutes. You've got a good ear, Vance. Thank you. Only it wasn't the violins. It was the violas. The stars were in great voice, I thought. Yes, the performance was quite enjoyable. However, I didn't come here to discuss opera with you, Mr. Adams. I came to talk about the late star of your show. Ah, Richard West. Naturally. Mr. Adams, was your show making money? Frankly, no. Was West in any way responsible for that? Undoubtedly. I had a contract with him. Had to pay him a lot of money every week. How long a contract did he have, Mr. Adams? Run of the play. Of course, I... Could have closed the show, but then I'd have no chance of getting any of my money back. His death saved you quite a bit of money then, didn't it? Unquestionably. And I think I see what you're driving at, Vance. I'm not driving at anything in particular, Mr. Adams. Not yet, that is. People sometimes kill for money, don't they, Vance? 
And I did save a lot of money with West dead. Your thinking isn't unreasonable. I suppose I'm a suspect. Although I'll tell you now, I'm not a very good one. I have several good suspects already, Mr. Adams. I'd gladly discard both of them in favor of one actual murderer. Miss Carey, you'll realize why you were brought to my office. No, I don't, Mr. Markham. All I know is that Vance said I could go. Yes, he did. And you're not being officially detained. You can leave any time you like. But there is one thing I want to know more about. What's that? According to the testimony of Richard West's valet, you broke into his dressing room the night he was killed and you threatened him with a bottle of acid. Oh, that. Oh, that. You're dismissing it rather lightly, Miss Carey. Because it's only half right. I threatened him, but not with any acid. The bottle had nothing in it but water. Oh. And what did you want with West? I wanted him to make good on his promises to me. That's what I wanted. I thought I could force him into getting me a chance in Hollywood. Hmm. You might have tried to do the same thing later that evening in his apartment, only this time you had a gun. I wasn't near his apartment. I told you that. I told Vance that I... Uh, excuse me, please. Markham speaking. Hello, Markham. Vance. Oh, hello, Vance. What's up? My spirits, for one thing, Markham. Will you do me a favor? Of course. What is it? I want you to reach Bob Davis and B.J. Adams and have them at my office in an hour. Can you do it? Of course I can do it, Vance. Good. You can bring Jean Carey with you if you like. She's there with you now, isn't she? Why, yes, but how did you know? I came to call for her to tell her some news that she wasn't going to like very much. And I found that a man from your office had been at her apartment. You have some news that she isn't going to like very well, Vance? Definitely, Markham. I'm going to prove her connection with the murder of Richard West. Please, all of you be seated comfortably. I won't Thank be very you, long Vance. getting to my point. Mm -hmm. Miss Carey? What is it, Vance? With whom were you in love? Bob Davis, Richard West, or your career? I wanted to be successful. That's what but I Jean, thought. But, Gene, you told me that... Not now, if you don't mind, Mr. Davis, please. Mr. Adams. Yes? How long have you been a theatrical producer? In this city? Yes. About ten years. What did you do before? Nothing much of anything, Vance. Acted, painted scenery, the usual thing. Uh, Vance, excuse my interrupting, will you? Certainly, Markham. What is it? You told me on the telephone that you could link Gene Carey with Richard West's murder. Was it through the lipstick on the glass in West's apartment? No. You put the lipstick there, didn't you, Mr. Davis? I? Yes, you hated West because he took your part in the play. You came up to his apartment with the idea of killing him and of making it look as if Miss Carey had been there. Why, that dirty... When you found him dead, you put lipstick on the champagne glass and on the cigarette. Why would I do a thing like that? I love Jean. I doubt that. You planted the evidence to take suspicion off yourself. You knew the police would come after you when they found West dead. So you tried to make it seem as if Miss Carey had been there. That was so Miss Carey couldn't incriminate you. Vance, you can't possibly know that Miss Carey didn't leave the lipstick on that glass and the cigarette. Even if we'd taken samples of her lipstick and they didn't match the stains we found, that wouldn't prove anything. She could have changed lipsticks. Of course she could have, Markham. But I'm reasonably certain Mr. Davis planted those lipstick marks for us to trace. Then he's the murderer, Vance? No, no, I didn't kill him. You'll never make me admit I killed him. I didn't, you hear? I didn't kill him. Nobody said you did. In fact, I know you didn't. Markham, the time for your arrest has come. Oh? You can hold one of the people in this room for murder. I'll supply you with all the information you need to complete your case. Well, that's very kind of you, Vance, but uh, whom do I arrest? Who, Markham? Why, B.J. Adams, of course. <laughs> I, B.J. Adams, of my own free will and volition, do hereby make this statement to District Attorney Markham and file Vance. I killed Richard West. Take these questions and answers down, Johnson, please. All right, sir. Uh, Mr. Adams, why did you kill West? As long as he was alive to appear in my show, it cost me thousands of dollars every week. Mr. Adams... What was the real reason? Hmm? What was that, Mr. Vance? What was the real reason you killed West? I killed him because of what he did to my daughter, Jean. What? Jean Carey is your daughter? Yes, Markham. I knew that when I found that Jean's father had left her when she was just a child and had been a professional musician at the time. 
In my first interview with Mr. Adams, he revealed a detailed knowledge of music. Well, it was too close a tie for me to ignore. So that's what put you on my trail, eh, Vance? Partly. That and your arrival in this city soon after you had left Jean and her mother. The whole thing was too coincidental. You had to be her father. I was. Maybe I didn't do the right thing by Jean when she was a kid, but I wasn't going to stand by and see her kicked her on by a heel like West. She didn't know I was her father, you see. But I knew who she was. So I came up to West's apartment the night of his death and shot him. Uh, tell me, Mr. Adams, were there two champagne glasses on an end table in the apartment? No. No? No, Markham, there weren't. Bob Davis set those up very nicely when he came to West's apartment shortly after the murder. He ran down to the drugstore, bought a lipstick, and smeared one of the glasses and a cigarette stub. I've been meaning to ask this for a long time, Vance. How did you know that Miss Carey didn't make those marks? Oh, Markham, it was an orange lipstick. And Miss Carey is a blonde. Oh. No blonde ever wears orange lipstick. It's not vivid enough. Mm -hmm. Deep red, purple on occasion, but never orange. Terribly unbecoming, Markham. Hmm. And I guess I'm terribly unobserving, Vance. I'm awfully glad you're around. <laughs> I'm glad I'm around, too, when there are murder cases to be solved. <laughs> Incidentally, Bob Davis was equally unobserving when he purchased the lipstick. He just asked for a lipstick and took the first one the clerk handed him, never bothering to look at the color. I'm glad he didn't. We really would have been confused if he had. No telling how long it would have taken us to get somewhere on the West murder. You're probably right, Markham. But we know where we are now, don't we? We're at the end of the curtain call murder case. Welcome back. Well, I guess if there's a moral of the story, and I hate to say something's a moral of the story when it should just be common sense, don't tamper with crime scenes. Yeah, that isn't much of a moral, but I mean, the young actor just kind of confused everything and just created some red herrings that Philo Vance had to resolve. It's like, don't play cute with that. It also does seem that a man going down to buy lipstick would be something that would be memorable. So, yeah, he was just kind of an annoying character who j just served to complicate and confuse things unnecessarily. All right, well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Rosa and John, Patreon supporters since January of 2020, currently supporting us at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Philo Vance, but coming up tomorrow, an episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, where... Expense account item one, $21.65. Train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City. I arrived at Grand Central late in the afternoon and went directly to a hotel where I registered and made arrangements to rent a car. Saxton resided in a quaint three-story house on an estate across the river in Jersey. It looked impressive enough to be an annex to Fort Knox. 
An old cad butler met me at the door and led the way into a mahogany and leather study, where I was left to wait for the master of the house. Mr. Dollar? That's right. <coughs> Glad to know you. Mitchell of your company called, said you'd be down. Yes, sir. Well, sit down, sit down. A cigar? Uh, no, thanks. Mm. Aren't you a little premature? How do you mean? <laughs> Well, there'll be no positive confirmation in my painting till after it's been examined, you know. When will the examination take place? <laughs> nasty cough. Yeah, nasty. <laughs> well, I'm going to turn the painting over to Mr. Uh, Farmer from the museum tomorrow morning. I imagine he'll have it for a day or so. I understand you paid 200000 <laughs> Yeah, I, I sure did. 200000 fat American dollars, Mr. Dollar. Have you any idea how long it takes to make $200,000, Mr. Dollar? Well, that kind of depends on who's making it. Yes. Me, I start getting senile around a buck ninety-eight. <laughs> oh, Lord. If I keep hacking like this, I'll end up doing business in an oxygen tent. <laughs> you like to see the painting, Mr. Dollar? Sure. Yeah, come on. Mr. Dollar, if I've been swindled, I'm going to cause more trouble than a hungry snake in a rabbit pen. Who'd you buy the painting from? Who? One of the biggest, most respectable dealers in Paris is all. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.